Good morning, and welcome to Crossroads Community Church. Um, for our announcements, uh, Bible study 2 p.m. this after this today at the church and online tinychat.com. The America for Christ offering will be taken up through 4-7. Which is today, of course. Uh, laughter recovery discovery meeting, seven to nine on Mondays. Uh, the other announcement: Welcome and thank you to David Allen, mm -hmm. who will be our guest pastor for the next two Sundays. As always, annual report and annual calendar of events is available for anyone upon request. Uh, We will begin our service. Almighty and everlasting God in whom we live and move and have our being, who has created us for thyself, so that our hearts are restless till they find rest in thee. Grant us purity of heart and strength of person, purpose, so that no selfish passion may hinder us from knowing thy will and no weakness from doing it. In thy light may we see life clearly, and in thy service find perfect freedom for thy mercy's sake. Our Father God, we come before you this morning to uh, worship and bless thy holy name. And we have uh, the, the uh, strength and the purpose to come before thee, before thy throne, because of the, the sacrifice made by your son, our savior, Jesus Christ. And it's in his name we pray. And, and we will pray as he taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. We will now uh, uh, read responsibly number 364 in your hymnal. Uh, the uh, choir will be uh, everyone the same as. So anyway, you folks. Read all the bold type. Why do you look for the living among the dead? He is not here. The Lord is risen. He has risen indeed. The Lord has risen. He has risen indeed. The Lord has risen. He has risen indeed. Where, O oh, death, is your victory? Where, O oh, death, is your sting? Death has been swallowed up in victory. Christ has risen indeed. Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me will live even though he dies. And whoever lives and believes in me will never die. Thanks be to God. He gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord is risen. He, he has, has risen, risen indeed. Hallelujah. Our first hymn uh, is not in the hymnals we have, but uh, Ryan will take care of that. Uh, hopefully the... 
it's a lie? By the tallies. By the tally trio, yes. Probably the most requested song we've had all week long. Gates and doors were barred and all the windows fastened down. I spent the night in sleeplessness and rose at every sound. Half in hopeless sorrow and half in fear the day would find the soldiers breaking through to drag us all away. And just before the sunrise I heard something at the wall. The gate began to rattle and a voice began to call. So I hurried to the window, I looked down into the street, expecting swords and torches and the sound of soldiers' feet. But there was no one there but Mary, so I went down to let her in. John stood there beside me as she told me where she'd been. She said they've moved him in the night, and none of us knows where. The stone's been rolled away, and now his body isn't there. So we all ran toward the garden, and John ran on ahead. We found the stone and the empty tomb just the way that Mary said. But the winding sheet they wrapped him in was just an empty shell. And how or where they'd taken him was more than I. Well, something strange had happened there, but just what I didn't know. John believed a miracle, but I just turned to go. Circumstance and speculation couldn't lift me very high. Cause I'd seen them crucify him, and I saw him die. Again, the guilt and anguish came. Everything I promised him added to my shame. When at last it came to choices, I denied I knew his name. And even if he was alive, it wouldn't be the same. filled with a strange and sweet perfume life that came from everywhere drove shadows from the room and jesus stood before me with his arms held open wide and i fell down on my knees and i just clung to him and then he raised me to my feet and as i looked into his eyes Shining out from him like sunlight from the skies Guilt and my confusion disappeared in sweet release. And every fear I'd ever had just melted into peace And angel of the Lord said, why seek living among the dead? He is not here
this time, we will continue our worship through uh, meditation and, and giving. How excellent is thy name. This morning, as we continue to worship thee, we, we, we bring gifts to you, a portion of what you've so generously given to us. Mm-hmm. And we pray that these gifts will be used in the furtherance of your kingdom here on earth in preparation for your return to us in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Praise God from Our next musical selection will be number 564 in the hymnal.
let it be, dear Lord, let it be. Okay, uh, at this time, uh, uh, it's that time in the, the, the service where we uh, make God aware of what our praises might be as a group because the Bible says that we are to go into our closet and, and pray in private, but also to to play among uh, our fellow believers. So anyway, any praises or any requests? Um, a, a praise for our city. We need some additions, um, ups and downs, but uh, we just are more aware of the Lord in our life every Good. single day. Good. And um, any downs that we've had were brought up, you know, so quickly, you know, because we've gotten into a wondrous habit of, of actually handing it over to God. <laughs> so, you know, you, you just feel him moving in your life so much more. And um, went up to my brothers again yesterday, and what my brother thought was going to be an easy five-step process has turned into a five-step process, but step one had parts A through Z, and part two had A through Z, and then yesterday, part three had A through Z. So hopefully next weekend, we will hit four and five expediently and get the whole uh, room fixing process done. So dad's ready to come home. Um, he actually woke up and the other day and wasn't sure what time of the day it was. He called mom in a panic. He's like, I think I was supposed to leave yesterday. They haven't brought me any food. And mom was like, dear me, relax. I'm sure they're not just going to leave you starved. You know, and you're not ready to go yet. And she called the nurses, and the nurse was like, it's 730 in the morning. They don't feed them until 8. <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know they, the, the cart doesn't actually come along until 8. So, yeah, he, he was a bit confused and definitely ready to get out of one room with a small window, <laughs> so, but yeah, everything is going very, very well, and we need definite just praise, praise for our employees. Okay. Good night, Mr. Davis, I guess, right? I just want to be <laughs> I just want to praise for my cousin. Uh, he had a brain aneurysm, mm. and uh, I haven't heard anything back. I'm, uh, uh, um, I'd like to keep um, Bill Salisbury in our prayers. Um, our brother-in-law, his dad, died in January, and um, the two of them together, um, with the income that, that David, our brother-in-law, had, and he, they did very well. Um, keeping the house going and everything. With not having his dad's income at all, mm. um, it's it's very tight. And so we just, and besides, they were very close. Of course, his, his mom, uh, my sister Betty, had, had died 10 years ago. So um, he and his dad were very close.
that? Let's go before the Lord in prayer. Our Father God, we come before you this morning to to follow your direction, and that is to pray in public for where two or three are gathered in your name, there you will be also. And so this morning we, we, we bring praises to you. Praise for Rachel and the family reaching the point where they can, they can bring their needs and problems before you and not immediately snatch them back again. That's hard to do, Father, and, and we thank you uh, uh, for, for working with them on this process. Um, We, we would uh, bring before you Bill, Bill Salisbury. We'd ask you to be very near to him, uh, for he, he still feels great loss concerning the death of his father, da- David. Um, so just, just lay your, your hands, as it were, on him mm-hmm. and give him peace. Um, we, we, would, uh, we would ask you to uh, bless Shane's cousin and uh, uh, keep him and keep him well. Uh, we ask you that, to be ever with Josh and help him at this point in his life when he has uh, life-changing decisions to make and help him to make the proper decision uh, so that his life may go forward in a positive manner. Um, Travel mercies uh, for Cliff on his travel back from Maryland and travel mercies for that matter for all of us whether we travel for our work or whether it's just across the street because uh, disaster can happen when you're only going around the block. Mm. And Father, we ask you to bless David Allen who brings our message today. Uh, You have worked a miracle in his life to this point to help him come back from that tragic day and and we praise you for it 
and uh, we ask you to pour your blessings out on uh, this small local expression of your church and help us to, to follow your will for this church that it may go forward and, and do good things in your name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. to be so uh, <laughs> anyway I, I uh, introduce you to a special presentation with our guest speaker David Allen David you're on Thank you for having me again. Uh, it's just such a blessing to um, be with you again. Let's get this thing taken care of. Actually, if you want to Just put it on the tie. There you go. Okay, thanks. Okay. Or, uh, what? Oh, no, that's funny. Yeah, um, yeah, all right. <laughs> um, today I'm going to be talking, uh, well, I'm going to give you a little bit of a testimony and a different one from uh, last year, but um, I'm going to begin by by opening the word. If you would, please join me in Luke chapter 10. Luke chapter 10. I'll be reading... Uh, about Jesus when he visited the home of Martha and Mary. This is starting at uh, verse 38. It says, As Jesus and his disciples were on their way, he came to the village where a woman named Martha opened her home to him. She had a sister called Mary who sat at the Lord's feet listening to what he said. But Martha was distracted by the preparations. She came to him and asked, Lord, don't you care that my sister has left me to do all the work myself? Tell her to help me. So the situation here is, is uh, Jesus is at the home of Mary and Martha, and uh, Martha is preparing dinner for them. She's making all the preparations, and she comes out to serve him, and there is her sister Mary just sitting there at the feet of Jesus, listening to what he had to say. 
And Martha became a little angry and said, tell her to get up and help me, can't she see I'm doing everything myself? And then Jesus responds to Martha. He says, Martha, Martha, you are worried about so many things when few things are needed. Indeed, only one. Now, Mary has discovered that, and it will not be taken away from her. So that's what I want to talk to you about and relate my, my personal testimony to is that what, what is it that, that Mary discovered? And, and I, I hope that you too will be encouraged by listening to the story to discover that for yourselves. See, I have been a father now for over nine years. You met my children last time I was here. And I, 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 love, I love my children, and I love helping them. Um, but they, they don't always listen. And, and the last four almost five years I've been sort of a stay-at-home father, uh, daddy daycare. And I've learned a lot about the heart of God through my Mr. Mom days. One day in particular that I'd like to share with you today, because this day was like no other. On this particular day, it seemed like I had absolutely no control over my children. And not that I want to control them, that, that I want to steal away their freedoms and make sure that they have no fun. I'm, I'm not an overbearing father, but I do appreciate that certain God-given authority that parents have. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. Anyways, on this particular day, I woke up late. And in my panic, I decided I was going to cut my prayer time, my devotion time, my just uh, relationship time with the Lord so that I could prepare breakfast for the children. So uh, <laughs> I, I spent over an hour, that was, <laughs> and that was a big, big, big mistake, because I spent over an hour in the kitchen making pancakes and eggs and bacon and sausage, the works. And when my children woke up, they came downstairs, and they said, Dad, we just want cereal. <laughs> I missed my time with God, and it was meaningless. It was vanity, vanity, all was vanity. But nevertheless, I told the children, this is a good breakfast, you're going to enjoy it, just sit here and eat. I'm going to go upstairs and I'm going to take a shower. So I went upstairs to take a shower, left them to eat their breakfast, and all I heard were the kids running around downstairs, laughing, screaming, playing games, they were having a great time. And I yelled downstairs several times. Quit playing down there. <laughs> Eat that breakfast I made you. Don't make me come down there. <laughs> but when, when I did go down, they were just sitting there quietly, 
staring at each other. Both of them had guilty looks on their faces. Neither of them had eaten more than five bites. And when I asked them why they hadn't eaten their breakfast, they said, well, we're just not hungry anymore, Dad. We're, we're kind of full now. <laughs> Again, I took it as a lesson well learned, and I told the kids to go upstairs and take their showers because we were going to the library. Well, my kids, they love the library because that's where they get video games and DVDs and books and plenty on the computers, all kinds of fun stuff. So when I told them that we were going to the library, they were excited. And they jumped out from the table and they raced up to the bathroom. Meanwhile, they left me with the breakfast mess to clean up, which <laughs> I didn't mind so much at first. But when I realized they had spilled their milk and it was all over the table and under the placemats, I wasn't too happy. And then my son, he comes back downstairs and he is crying because his sister locked him out of the bathroom and he wanted to be the first to take his shower. I could not convince the boy that we are men and therefore we need to act as gentlemen and let the lady go first. Anyways, when he did get up in the bathroom, then my daughter comes downstairs and she's crying because she was locked out of the bathroom and she never got to comb her hair or brush her teeth. <laughs> so much for that uh, being a gentleman talk, I, I guess. Um, so it was about 12 o'clock that day when we made it to the library. And you know how library is supposed to be quiet and everyone's hush, hush when you're in the library? Not this day. One of the kids wanted this and the other kid wanted that, but neither of them wanted what dad wanted. And when I finally did get them quieted down, they said, Dad, can we play hide and go seek? And I said, no, we are in the library. We need to be quiet. We need to be good. Just forget it. But they kept crawling. They kept begging. Please, Dad, please, 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 please let us play hide and go seek. Finally, they broke me down. I thought about it. I said, well, hide and go seek is a quiet game. One person hides, the other person seeks. What's the worst that could happen? <laughs> I totally forgot that when the person hiding is found, they jump out, surprise! And this scare the, the, the person that was seeking. And then it becomes a game of tag in which the seeker needs to make it back to base before they're tagged or they have to look again. Well, here they come running and laughing and screaming and guess who they made the base? <laughs> Well, when we got out of the library that day, I was tired. I did not want to go home, and I did not want to make lunch, not after the episode with breakfast. So I told the kids I would take them out for lunch. Now, being an evangelist, I 
don't make a whole lot of money, but praise the Lord, the benefits are out of this world. So because of the joy that is before me, I took my children out for lunch, and I figured they, they had to be hungry now. I mean, they didn't eat much of that breakfast I made. Well, they didn't eat much of the lunch either. And I insisted several times. I said, hey, you don't know what this is costing me. You need to eat everything. We are not going home until those plates are clean. I want to see your mouth chewing and not talking. Well, every time I looked over at them, they're like, Dad, we're chewing, we're chewing. <laughs> after, after an hour of that, I just broke down and I said to the waitress, I called the waitress over, I said, bring me two boxes. I box everything up, we're going home. And I looked at the kids, I said, this will be your dinner. So we went home. And at dinner time, I was turning into a grudge. And I said, I'm going to sit here and watch both of you eat everything that's in those boxes. I don't want any playing. I don't want any games. You got 10 minutes. Well, they took me seriously, and they ate everything, and they ate it really fast and really quiet, which made me happy. So I wanted to reward them. And I <laughs> went and made a bag of microwave popcorn. That was easy enough. I put it in two bowls, and I brought it out, and I said to the kids, hey, for eating our new dinner, here is your reward. And they, 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 they both wanted the same bowl of popcorn. It was like the one bowl was no good. It was contaminated or something. <laughs> and they grabbed the one bowl and started fighting over it. And before you know it, popcorn's in the air and all over the floor in the carpet. They wasted the reward I gave them, which made me unhappy. But on top of that, they expected me to clean up their mess, which I didn't, I didn't want to do, but as a loving father, I did it. And I took, needless to say, it took me over an hour to pick up the popcorn and the seeds and the kernels out of the carpet. And by the time my wife got home that night, I was exhausted. And my patience was growing pretty thin. And I just wanted to be alone for a while. So I said, I'm going up to the bedroom. I got up there, I locked the door, I threw away the key. <laughs> I wanted to be alone. Well, the kids came upstairs and started beating on the door. Dad, let us in, let us in. I said, no, go away. I want to be alone. But they kept beating on the door harder and harder. Please, 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 Dad, let us in. So finally, I opened the door, and I looked at them, and I told them about all the trouble they had caused me this day and that I just wanted to be alone for a while. Well, they got really sad at that point, and they looked up at me and they said, Dad, we're sorry. We didn't mean to make you mad. Please forgive us. So instantly, I forgave them, but I was still exhausted, and I still wanted to be alone. I wanted time alone, right? 
So I told the kids, go downstairs, you can play Wii, you can watch TV, you can do whatever you want to stay out of trouble, I want to be alone. Well, my son was thrilled. He, yeah, I'm free, and he ran. He took off, which is okay because, hey, that's what I told them to do. That's what I wanted them to do. He was listening, right? He was being obedient. But my daughter, <laughs> my daughter, she didn't listen to me at all. She stuck her foot in the door and grabbed onto my shirt and said, Dad, I just want to spend some time with you. Wow. My heart was broken. And I couldn't be angry anymore. I invited her in the room and we watched a movie that night, I think Alvin and the Chipmunks. It doesn't really matter because the point is we had a great time that night and our relationship was healed. It was restored. But why am I telling you this story? Because many of us feel that God has been so good to us. He has blessed us. He has gifted us. He has rewarded us. But we have overlooked those blessings. We have neglected that gift. We have wasted the reward. And in doing so, we know that we have angered God. So, we, we go to him and we, we get on our knees and we say, I'm sorry, Lord. Please forgive me. And he is faithful and he is just to forgive us of all of our sins and to cleanse us of all unrighteousness. So we are forgiven, but we still feel and for some reason, we're unable to connect with God the way we used to. It's as if that relationship is suffering. It's like God has been exhausted and withdrawn from us. Well, first of all, let me assure you that you can never exhaust the love of God. And if you think that he has withdrawn from you, he will never leave you. He will never forsake you. He is with you to the end of this age. So we need to do something different. We need to make that change. The problem is not up there, but the problem is here. It's in our hearts. So what if we stick our foot in the door and grab on to God and tell him, I just want to spend some time with you. Don't you think his heart is broken when we do that very thing? Don't you think he is more loving, more kind, more caring, more compassionate than I am? But yet, when my daughter approached me like that, I could not be angry anymore. And I welcomed her into my presence. And our relationship was healed. Don't you want your relationships with God healed, restored? Well, let me tell you something. Then we need to do something different. 
We need to go after God with that same desperate determination that my daughter came at me with that night. Doesn't the word of God tell us to draw near to God? And he will draw near to you. Well, I want to encourage us to do that very thing in our lives, to spend some time with God. Just get on your knees and, and worship the Lord. Don't, you don't have to ask him for anything. Just spend time getting to know who he is and what he's all about. I want to sing a song for you. And this song is called Spend Some Time. Dennis. <laughs>
show us, show us, show our hearts how to make you smile, Lord, that we may find out what pleases the Lord. Ephesians 5.10, the Apostle Paul tells us, find out what pleases the Lord. So let, let's do a very thing in our lives. I have, I have a bucket right there, and I brought, last time I gave you all a gemstone. Uh, today, I'm, I'm going to just pass them around. Today, I, I'm going <laughs> to give you a whistle. And I want these whistles to remind you of this, this very fact. See, when I go to church, I, I'd like to blow a whistle. And sometimes I blow it in praise to God because he is awesome. Sometimes I blow it to instruct people to, that they're going the wrong direction and they need to go this way and quit going over there. Sometimes I blow my whistle at the devil because he's trying to trap God's people. He wants to trick us. And, and somebody needs to alert the church of what the devil's doing. But today I'm, I'm going to blow my whistle for a new reason. And this is what I want each of you to remember, each of you to take home with you, is that in a sporting game, like football or baseball, the referee will blow the whistle. And sometimes when he blows the whistle, it means time out. Now, some of the players will waste that time out. They'll run around and they'll boast and they'll brag about how well they've been playing the game and their successes they're having. Other players, though, will humble themselves. And they'll think about the mistakes they've made and how they can improve in the game. But the players that do even better, they go directly to the coach because they want to find out what he's thinking, what's going on in his mind, what mistakes is he aware of. And God is aware of all of our mistakes. So if you go to him, he's going to tell you what's wrong in your life. And you had better be listening because he, he's not joking around. But the players that do the best, they want to know these things. They want to know how they can improve in the game according to his words. They want to know what, are, what is his plan for the team. So I, I ask each of you to take your whistles home today. And, and if you want to blow them and praise the God, that's fine. If you want to blow them at the devil and tell him to get away, that's fine too. But I just want these whistles to remind you to call time out, to take time out and spend time with the Lord. <whistles> time out. Thank you. Thank you. So, do you want me to pray, pray them out or do you want it? Turn it back. I think Ryan has one more song. Oh. Have a final prayer if you would like. 
harmony. Another song sounds good. We usually have a certain amount of the message, so. All right. <laughs> I'm not awesome. He is awesome. I'm just a servant. I'm a servant of awesome. I'm, I'm, I'm a servant of awesome. Yeah. Very powerful, motivating words today and, and message today. Yeah. Very heartfelt, soul felt. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Just hang on. <laughs> now I remember, so. Good, good. <laughs> any, any, any questions? No. Any comments? Any more? Take it home with you. Remember when you look at the whistles that you need to spend time with him. That touches the heart of God more than anything else that you can do for him. I mean, when I serve him, when when I'm ministering, that, that feels great, but it doesn't feel half as great as just getting on my knees and being with him.
that's what that's what uh, Mary discovered was that it's it's just relationship with him. It's being with him. It's knowing him. The Apostle Paul tells us in Philippians chapter three. He he tells us that all the things he's done in the past, things that he considered as gain, all those things, he he's considers them as as refuge, as garbage, as dung. He he actually says that as dung for Christ Jesus. But then he goes on and he says, and furthermore, even beyond that, I consider all things. So he's not, he's not just talking about the things of the past anymore. He's talking about the present day things, the future things, the glory that he's achieving for Christ, the lives that are being changed, the fruit that he produces for the kingdom. He says, I consider all things lost. Why? In comparison to just knowing him, to becoming more fully, more clearly, more intimately engaged with who he is. And the Apostle Paul, he was one of the wisest men that I ever knew. He, he knew where it was. He knew where it is. He knows where it's at. And, and he, he told us, and so, to listen to the words he said is wisdom. Any other uh, comments? Lord, I just thank you for this day, for this morning, for the opportunity to be here and to speak to your people. And I just pray that you, you, you pierce their hearts with this word, that they would take it out, that they would not neglect to spend time with you. I know life is is busy and 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 things come and 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 our minds just filled with other things that need to be done but lord i just pray that you would help each of us to put those things aside and spend some time with you in jesus name thank you lord Amen. Amen. Thank you so much. Yes, countless, endless thanks. Yes. It was very, very moving. Oh, thank you.